Hi, and welcome to a new video. This here is the most basic form of a mechanical hand winding watch movement. And this is the same movement disassembled in all of its parts. Looks complicated, right? So let's bring a little bit of structure into this mess. The parts of a watch can be split roughly into four main groups, who all facilitate different tasks within the movement, and these four groups are the base plate and bridges, the train wheels, the escapement, and the keyless works. To explain you how a mechanical watch works, we will start with this disassembled watch, and I will assemble it and at the same time explain to you how this watch movement works. We start with the base plate and bridges. Typically a base plate or main plate forms the platform that gives the movement its rigidity and acts sort of as a backbone on which every other component builds onto. The main plate also already has all of the bearing and bushing points for the trainer wheels on it. The bridges contain the wheels and other parts that go into the movement and bolt to the main plate. Bridges who are only fixed to the main plate on one side are called cocks in watchmaking. Usually that is the balance cock or it's sometimes the pallet fork cock. The main way of interface to use a watch is called the keyless works, so called because before this mechanism you had to use two keys to independently wind and set a watch movement. This mechanism made the key obsolete and combines and integrates both actions by the use of a crown and stem. Using this mechanism you can wind the movement and set the time. This mechanism sits on the dial side of the movement and is usually hidden from view. Next up are the wheels of the movement. The barrel houses the mainspring. This spring is what provides the power to the entire watch and it can be wound up manually as in a hand winding watch or via a mechanism or a rotor in an automatic watch. But this is something for another video. The spring is enclosed into the barrel and attached on one end to the barrel arbor in the middle and on the other end it acts against the wall of the barrel, wanting it to spin when wound. On the top of the barrel is the ratchet wheel, and it can be turned through the crown wheel when the watch is wound. To contain the energy within the mainspring and preventing it from unwinding itself, the ratchet wheel is blocked using the click and click spring allowing the ratchet wheel and so also the mainspring only to turn in one direction. Engaged in the teeth on the outer rim of the barrel is the rest of the trainer wheels. Like a gearbox reducing the torque of the mainspring and turning a small rotation of the barrel into many many more rotations at the last wheel, the escape wheel. On the dial side of the watch there are more gears. On the center pinion of the minute wheel, which goes through the main plate to the dial side, the cannon pinion is attached. On this the minute hand will be placed. On top of the cannon pinion sits the wheel on which the hour hand will be placed. Both are coupled by an intermediate wheel, which provides the correct relation between hour hand and minute hand. We now have basically everything in place to have a watch that has moving hands. But something is missing, which brings us finally to the escapement. Technically the pinion gear of the escapement wheel is the last part of the train of wheels, and the specially formed teeth of the escapement wheel are already part of the escapement. And that is exactly what's next. What we have so far is everything to store and transmit power, and if we wind the movement, now the hands would be already turning, although uncontrolled and for a very short time. So what we need to have is a way to stop the uncontrolled release of power in the mainspring. First of all, we block the train of wheels with this little part called the pallet fork. But this little lever actually has two functions. More about that in a minute. We can now put the balance in. The regulator. And when we have power in the mainspring, the movement starts running.
But how? What is happening here? Well, let's go back a step. We already know about the pellet fork. The pellet fork can pivot from left to right, always unlocking just one tooth of the escapement, allowing the gear train to move on a bit. But if you look closely, you can also see here that the pellet fork not just unlocks, but almost jumps to the other side. And that little amount of energy in that jump is important. Let's switch to the balance wheel again for a second. The balance is comprised of the rim of the balance and the hairspring. That little coiled spring prevents the balance from spinning on its axis and reverses its direction once the limit of the spring is encountered. That makes the balance swing back and forth. On the underside of the balance wheel also sits this little red jewel. And that engages perfectly with the fork on the end of the pallet when we put the balance into the movement. What happens now is that the balance with its jewel unlocks the pellet fork and allowing the escape wheel to advance one tooth. But as that happens, because of the shape of the pellet jewels on the pellet fork, there's also a tiny little energy transfer to the balance. It's that little jump of the pellet fork, remember? That little impulse of energy replaces the lost energy that the balance wheel encounters due to friction while spinning back and forth, and that keeps the movement running for as long as there comes new energy from the mainspring in the barrel. And that's how a simple mechanical watch works. Obviously, there are different functions like dates, chronographs, moon phases, and all other things added to a watch, but they all work off of this basic mechanism. There are also many different types of escapements, although this type of escapement, which is the Swiss lever escapement, is used in most modern mechanical watches. The last question we could ask is what makes a watch a accurate and precise timekeeper? Well, that has a lot to do with the escapement and the balance wheel, but that's also for another video. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on new videos in the future. And you can also follow me on Instagram for more content. You find the link for Instagram in the video description. If you have any watchmaking related questions, or if you have any ideas for future videos, feel free to comment them in the comment section down below. Thank you, and I hope to see you in the next video again.